All right, so C1, we talked about a bunch of stuff, but one of the things was using distance to find the length of the sides and then using that to classify the triangle. So number one says, um, show that the points form the vertices of an isosceles triangle. This time it's specific and it's telling you it's isosceles. On your quiz, it will not. On your quiz, it's gonna say, find the length of all three sides. You'll get credit for that part of the question because that will be your distance formula part. And then it will ask you to classify it as equilateral, isosceles, right, or none of them. Okay, so you're gonna have to go through the process of drawing, I mean, not drawing it out, but for finding all three sides. If you didn't, like if you had actually just gone ahead and graphed it, you might've been able to spot that, um, sorry, I'm trying to grab it, that one, two of the sides looked like they were about the same length. And so that helped you to identify it. But again, on your quiz, it's gonna just say graph, I mean, it's gonna say find the lengths and then, um, classify it. So I'm just going to label this is one, negative three, three, two, and negative two, four. It didn't even give you um, the letters there, your quiz will. But if I had done this, it appears as though these two are the ones that are um, close in length. So I could have tested those first. So if I do this, I get I plugged it in A and B first, which is the first two points, and I get two squared plus minus a negative becomes plus, so that's five squared, and I get four plus 25, which is the square root of 29. Remember, you need to simplify if you can. 29 is prime, so it can't be simplified. That would literally, on the quiz, it's gonna say, what is A, B, and you're gonna write it on the line. Anything you write on that line needs to be simplified if it can be. If I go to BC, I get the square root of negative five squared plus two squared, 25 plus four again, and there's my other square root, 29. Because those are the same, if I was just classifying this as isosceles, that'd be enough. But if it wants you to classify it, you gotta keep going because you're gonna get all three side lengths. So I'd get negative three squared plus, this becomes seven, nine plus 49, which is 58. Now 58 is even, so two goes into it, but it's 29 times and that doesn't break down any further. So AC would stay square root 58. So let's just say it said classify it. Is it possible for it to be equilateral and right? No, why not? All, this, all the angles would have to be equal. All the sides would have to be equal, right? And a right triangle definitely has one side that's longer, right? Is it possible for it to be isosceles and right? Yes. What makes it isosceles? What, what's that called? What kind of triangle? A 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? So if I actually, if it just said classify this, not only are you trying to do it from its sides, but you also have to check the right angle. So if this was the quiz, I'd take this a step further and see if the square root of 29 squared plus the square root of 29 squared equals the square root of 58 squared. And guess what? 29 plus 29 equals 58. So this is actually right and isosceles. If you look on your graphed triangle, it looks like that little angle where they meet is a right angle. So for the purposes of the warm up, this was enough. Just showing that two of them were the same is where you're, where you're headed. But for the quiz, it's going to say classify. So you're going to find the lengths of all three sides, see if it's equilateral isosceles, and then test to see if it's a right triangle. Yeah. The A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So test, test it out and see if it works. You're welcome. Questions? All right, questions. Question two takes the one that we did in the notes on Friday to the next step. On Friday, we had the center and the radi or center and a point on the circle. This time we have the center, oh sorry, this time we have the end points of the diameter. So if I had actually drawn this out, negative one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. This are these are the end points of my diameter. The equation of the standard form of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And for that, I need the center, which is hk, and the r. How do I find the center? Good. So I'm going to do the midpoint. 
So I'm gonna do the, well, yes, once I get the center, I'm gonna plug it in, changing its sign. To actually find the center, I'm gonna use the midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over two, y1 plus y2 over two. So negative one plus three over two, and two plus four over two. And I get my midpoint, which is the center, is one, three. Which makes sense if you drew it out, that looks like that would be my center. Now, how can I find the radius? Kevin. The distance from the center to, to the edge. Good, I can use center to either point and use the distance formula. That's one way, this would be my, I could use this as my x1 and my y1 and this is my x2, y2 for example. That's gonna give me my radius. How else could you find it? I would say there's three ways. What would be the distance from the endpoints of the diameter? What does that represent? If I use the distance formula of these two, I'd get the length of the diameter. And how could I get the radius? Cut it in half, good. Or I could go back to what we did in the notes which is pick either of these points with the center being HK. All of those work, okay? I would recommend that if you're going to do that, one of the coordinate points has a negative and the other one does not, and we make some dumb mistakes when it comes to negatives, no matter how smart you are, right? So I would say I'd pick this one and the HK. So if I do that, I'm gonna get the X, which is three, minus the H, which is one squared, plus the y, which is four, minus the k, which is three, squared equals r squared. So I plugged in the hk from my center, and I plugged in the xy from one of the points that's given. Two squared plus one squared, four plus one, which is five, that's your r squared. So then my equation is x minus the h, which is one squared, plus y minus the k, which is three squared, equals r squared, which is five. Questions? Yeah. C2. So C2 is the graphs of equations. These are all different types of graphs. These are graphs that could involve parabolas and square roots and absolute values and lines, all that stuff. We're going to talk about how do I graph them, how do I find intercepts, and how do I find symmetry. And then all this stuff plus what we did for C1 is what's on Wednesday's quiz, which we'll review a little bit more tomorrow. All right, we start with the basics of a graph. Every graph is a, you know, formed by a set of points. So if the question is, does this point lie on the graph, then all you have to do is plug it in. And if it's a balanced equation, it's a yes. So if I plug in the x's and the y's, I simplify each side of the equation and it equals each other, then that coordinate point is a point on the graph. And that would look something like this. Determine whether the given points are on the graph of the equation. So here's the equation of my graph. And then there's two questions here. This is one and this is the other. So it's asking is zero negative two a point on this graph? And to test that out, I'm gonna plug it in as my X and my Y. So everywhere there's an X, I put the zero. And everywhere there's a Y, I put the negative two. When you plug in, you plug in in parentheses. So that negative two squared is not minus two squared. It is negative two squared and then we add it. So we always get rid of that negative when we square it like that. So this becomes zero plus zero plus four and four equals four. Because that works, this is a yes. That point would be on that graph. 
Yep. Yeah, so when you plug in for a variable, you plug in as though it's in parentheses. So the first thing we do is square that, and then you would add it. So it's not minus 2 squared like that, because that would actually end up being minus 4. Yeah. This is in here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. So I get 1 minus 2 plus 4 equals 4, negative 1 plus 4, and that's 3. 3 does not equal 4, so this one is not on my graph. Questions? All right, now let's talk about some strategies to graphing any kind of equation. So there might be some you recognize, obviously a line is something hopefully we remember to graph. You might see something that's got an x squared and so you know that's a parabola. You might see a square root and so you know that's like the single arc. You might see an absolute value and you know that's a v. If you don't remember that stuff, then you fall back on literally <coughs> plug in some points. So if we can isolate one of the variables so it's on the side by itself, we tend to try to do that. And usually it's a y equals whatever's on the other side. But there are also times if the y is squared that we can do an x equals. And that would be something like a parabola turned on its side or if the y was underneath the square root, we would want to isolate the x. If we have no idea what it looks like, we're going to use a table of values and literally plug in points. And then we're going to plot them and connect them. Eventually, by the end of today, we'll also bring in intercepts and symmetry. But for right now, we are plotting points, which looks like this. It literally says graph using the T-chart, and it gives you the coordinate points it wants you to use. So you simply plug them in. For A, I'm going to take Y, or so I'm going to take X and make it negative 1, then 0, then 1, then 2. So Y equals negative 3 times negative 1 plus 1. That's 3 plus 1, which is 4 y equals negative 3 times 0 plus 1, which is 0 plus 1, or 1. y equals negative 3 times 1 plus 1, negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. And y equals negative 3 times 2 plus 1, negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. Underneath it literally just means rewrite that in coordinate point form. So when x is negative 1, y is 4. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is negative 2. And when x is 2, y is negative 5. And then we plot those points. Negative 1, 4. 0, 1. 1, negative 2. 2, negative 5. I know it's a line, so I'm even going to give you the arrows at the ends. So on Thursday, we fall back to like literally graphs of lines with slope and all that stuff. Those will all be lines. Today's stuff is going to be a group of a bunch of different stuff. You could get a line, you could get a parabola, you could get a square root, you can get an absolute value, you can get a cubic function. You just have to plot those points if you don't know what it looks like. All right, go to B, same thing. This time we're plugging in y equals negative one squared plus two times negative one. One minus two, which is negative one. y equals zero squared plus two times zero. y equals 1 squared plus 2 times 1. That's 3. And y equals 2 squared plus 2 times 2. That's 8. So I get negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, and 2, 8. So 
if I connect only the points that were given, this is what my graph looks like. What should my graph look like if it's an x squared? A parabola. So this should come back up at some point. In a minute, we're going to use things like intercepts. We're going to review those. But if it just said to plot these points and that's all you drew, that's fine. Okay. If it's to graph it using intercepts and that kind of stuff, we're going to keep going. We're going to plot some extra points. I could have plotted the points over here to see where it came back up. But for right now, you could literally leave it as it is. Questions so far? Okay, we're actually, your quiz will not require the graphing calculator this week. Eventually we're gonna get there, but not this week, okay? So intercepts are obviously where they cross the axis. God bless you. The x-intercepts are when you plug zero in for y. The y-intercepts are when you plug zero in for x. If you're looking at your graph, the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. And if you're looking at your graph, the y-intercept is going to be where it crosses the y-axis. So your quiz is going to give you an equation. It's going to ask you for the intercepts. It's going to be part of the graphing process. These are also always written in coordinate point form. So this is going to be a number, comma, zero. And this is going to be zero, comma, a number. Intercepts are always in coordinate point form. All right, the next thing you're going to use is symmetry. So if something is, if you're testing to see if it's symmetric to the x-axis, then we're going to replace y with negative y, and we're going to simplify the equation. If I'm testing algebraically, if it's symmetric to the y-axis, then I'm replacing x with negative x, and again, simplifying the equation. And if it's the origin, I do both, x with negative x, y with negative y. After you replace them and then you simplify it, if it goes back to the original equation or each term is the exact opposite, then it passes that symmetry test. So if I, if I replace at y with negative y and it goes back to positive, that would be symmetric to the x-axis. So let's say I said x equals y squared. If I replace y with negative y, what happens when I square it? You get positive y squared again. It goes back to the original. That's what, how that would look. So that would be symmetric to the x-axis. It's actually a graph that's turned sideways, which if I fold from top to bottom, it would be symmetric to the x-axis. Now, if I did the reverse, if it was y equals x squared and I replace the x with negative x, it goes back to the original. That would be a parabola. That when I fold it left to right along the y-axis overlaps and that would be symmetric to the y-axis. Something to the origin could be like a circle. X squared plus Y squared equals one is a circle. That would be symmetric to both the X and the Y. So that would also be symmetric to the origin. There are times when something's just symmetric to the origin though. It doesn't have to be symmetric to both. So if I had y equals x to the third, and I'm testing for origin symmetry, this would be a negative y and then a negative x to the third. What happens if I raise a negative to the third power? It stays negative. So this is a case where it's not the exact original, but every sign has changed. That would also be symmetric. To the origin the cubic function looks like this so the origin if you could picture folding it top to bottom and then left to right if they overlap that's symmetry to the origin 
it would also be the same thing if you take the X's and the Y's and you switch the signs. That's also how you see it from coordinate points. All right, we're gonna put it all together. So the quiz is gonna do the same. It's gonna give you an equation. It's gonna ask you to find the X intercepts, the Y intercepts, the symmetry, and then graph it. Each of those parts will earn you credit. So don't be overwhelmed if you don't get it all, okay? Each of them will earn you credit. Just take it piece by piece. And at the end, if you have no idea what it looks like, you're gonna plot some extra points. That's what your fallback is. All right, so this one says, graph the following equation using intercepts, symmetry, and additional points. So I'm gonna start with my X intercepts. Then I'm gonna do my Y intercept. Then I'm gonna do the X axis symmetry, the Y axis symmetry, the origin, and then I'm gonna graph it. How do I find X intercepts? Make the y zero, so this would be zero equals absolute value of two minus x. Normally, if it's absolute value equals a number, I set it equal to the positive and negative version of that number, but there's no such thing with zero, right? So I just eliminate the absolute value bars, and I solve, and I get x equals two. So two zero is my X intercept. How do I find my Y intercept? Good, so I'd get Y equals absolute value of two minus zero. Y equals absolute value of two, which is two. And I get zero, two. With me so far? How do I test for X axis symmetry? God bless you. What do I change, the X or the Y? Other way around, right? The Y, so you always change the opposite letter. So I'm gonna make it negative Y equals absolute value of two minus X. Then I see if there's anything to simplify. There's not this time. So does that match the original equation? Are those the same things? No. The Y changed, but only the Y changed, right? So the th two things that would make this a yes is everything went back to the original or everything's the exact opposite. Neither of those happened, so this does not have X axis symmetry. For y axis symmetry, I'm going to change the x. So I get y equals absolute value of 2 minus a negative x. What happens with minus a negative? Becomes plus. So this becomes y equals absolute value of 2 plus x. Does that equal my original? Nope. One of the signs changed, again, only just the X, nothing else, so it is also a no for Y axis symmetry. And then for the origin, I change both. Negative Y would equal absolute value of two minus the negative, makes that plus X. It does not match my original. Two of the things changed this time. Both the Y is the opposite sign and the X is the opposite sign, but the two is still positive. So this also would be a no. It failed all three tests.
Now I'm gonna use what I have, which is two zero, zero two. There is no symmetry and that helps me determine that it's not happening like this because then it would be symmetric to the x-axis. It's not happening like this because then it would be symmetric to the y-axis, right? All of those things you can rule out with symmetry. What is an absolute, absolute value graph look like? Do you remember? A V, right? So I know it's got to either come down and go back up like this, or it could flip upside down, go up and come back down, right? Either way, I need some additional points. So I can pick anything from either side. I could pick to, pick to plug in a negative 2. And so I'd get y equals absolute value of 2 minus a negative 2. y would equal absolute value of 4. So when x is negative 2, y is 4. That just tells me it's continuing up on that side. So now I need to pick something from the other side. I'm going to pick positive 4 over here. y equals absolute value of 2 minus 4. Absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. So when x was 4, y is 2. And there's the line coming back up again. So I know my graph looks like that. No, like if I had coordinate point 4, 2, then it would switch to be negative 4, negative 2. That would be your origin. So not just the variables, but like the numbers too. That's Correct. The like if you had the coordinate points, it would be the negatives of both. Does that make sense? You would switch both. You could plug in something for y. Yeah, that's fine. You would just have to, you're dealing with the absolute value, that's all. So then you'd set it equal to both positive and negative of that value. With absolute value, it might get more complicated, but you certainly could. Yep. Questions? All right, so we're going to test for the x-intercepts first. I plug 0 in for y. You can do two things here. I can factor the right side as 2 plus x and 2 minus x because that's the difference to two squares. And I can split and solve, and I'd get x equals negative 2 or x equals positive 2. Or I can use your even root rule. Your, when I move the x to the other side, I'd get x squared equals 4. And then when I square root, I have to remember to do plus and minus and x would equal plus and minus two. So I get negative two, zero, and positive two, zero. There are two x-intercepts. If you know you need a refresher on graphing, there is a link to a video literally on the module that's graphing video. It goes through, I mean factoring. It goes through all the different types of factoring, okay? That is one of those skills that we're not, I'm not gonna reteach, okay? So you wanna make sure you're comfortable. The y-intercept, I would plug in zero, and I get y equals four, and that's zero, four. For the y, or the x-axis symmetry, I change the y to negative y. There's no simplifying. It doesn't go back to its original, so this is a no. For the y-axis symmetry, I plug in negative x. Negative x gets squared and goes back to positive x. And this time, this matches the original. So this is a yes. It is symmetric to the y-axis. And then the origin, the y would be negative, the x would stay negative so this is also a no and with this one I'd plot negative 2 positive 2 0 4 if we know our x squareds are parabolas it certainly helps I know this is symmetric to the y so whatever happens here also happens here and it's consistent with all the information I found So I'm going to show you real quick how to do this on the graphing calculator app because some of the homework questions are going to say graph this question and then find your intercepts. 